It's cold. It is cold here, but I'm at a very warm place. Very close to my heart. Hello. I am in the study hall of my old yeshiva, which is, you know, once your home, always your home. And this is actually the place that I was studying in when I started with these videos. So we are where it all started, and I'm doing something that I believe I've never done before, which is shoot this video on my phone in portrait mode. It's funny because when I was studying here officially in this yeshiva, I used to sleep here on Thursday nights um, while preparing for and then filming the late Parsha show. We just had a Fabring in there, which is why it looks a little messy. One of the things that occur in this Torah portion is the mun, the food from heaven. Right? Hashem literally sustains us in this openly miraculous way. Of course, Hashem is always the one sustaining us, but generally, the food that we eat is uh, food that we buy from money we've earned through work that we've done. We don't like see it as this revealed miracle, right? And usually there's waste products from the food. Not with the mun. Wasn't like that. None of that was with the mun. Our sages tell us something supremely interesting. I mean, we could always rely on our sages to tell us interesting stuff, right? This is what they say. The Torah was not given to be expounded upon, except to those who eat mun. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm saying I don't know because the Torah has infinite depth. But here's a simple explanation. Torah can really only be studied by someone who doesn't have financial stress, worry, and concern about how to make their next dollar. Only such a person whose mind is free from concerns like that. Someone who, like when we ate the mun, right? recognizes that their sustenance comes completely from God. Only such a person can really study Torah. Okay, new question. Is that saying that none of us, well, most of us cannot study Torah because most of us are concerned about how we're going to put food on the table because we don't have food falling from the sky? How can we study Taira if our sages tell us that Taira was not given except for those who eat man, who have this kind of serenity and peace? But, so I shouldn't study Taira because, uh, because I'm running a business? No. No, that's not what it means. Even if most of your day is not involved in Taira and you are concerned with making money, you can still study Taira in a way that is totally at peace, totally serene. Whatever time you allocate to the study of Torah, for a man, the minimum amount of study of Torah that we must do is one chapter in the morning, one chapter in the evening. That's the way our sages put it. And whatever time you will put into study of Torah, you set that time, and at that time, in that hour, in that 10 minutes, the only thing that should be on your mind is the study of Torah, getting to know God. God's will, God's wisdom, which we are so lucky to have and be able to learn and study. This is what it means that it can only be studied by someone who eats the mun. Yeah, so for the most part of the day, we are busy with other things. But when we study Torah, be like those who ate the mun, our ancestors. Total recognition that everything is from God. And right now, you're just getting to know God. So that's all that, that's all that is. This is learning in Mashiach mode. And we have to be living in Mashiach mode. Showing Hashem, we're ready. We're ready for you to send us our righteous Mashiach. We're ready for our righteous Mashiach to reveal himself as our king. We are ready because we're crowning Mashiach as our king. By living this way, with more love for our fellow with more joy, studying more Torah like this, and doing every mitzvah we can do enthusiastically. We must also say verbally, not just in our actions, do all the above, but verbally. King Mashiach, reveal yourself, and Hashem, make it happen, because it's all from you.